tuning in to another AirTech instructional video. It's going to be a little hard to do this one. This is just going to be a short one on our fabric primer. Our fabric primer mixes five to one and then up to one part of reducer by the book. But you can take it on up to close to two parts reducer to make it flow out and not have a lot of orange peel that you're going to have to sand out later. First off, when you're mixing, I like to go ahead and mix my my paint and my hardener and my reducer and then you might say let it cook for maybe five or ten minutes then strain it into your cup uh, we use these uh, inserts in our guns and you want you want a good gun that has a you know a 1.8 or you know this one's got a 1.5 but it, it's this is this gun's uh, this Segola has got a 1.5, but it flows real good. You're wanting a gun that has a little bit bigger flow. And make sure if you're just using a chin, nothing wrong with a cheap gun, but if you got one of the little cheap guns that has the screen down in the bottom of the cup, take it out. I mean, you're gonna do your straining right here. But by letting it cook, you will, uh, that some of the stuff kind of starts to clobulate, I guess, or, you know, it'll make a few little boogers. If you, if you just let it cook for a little bit and then do your straining, right before you paint, that helps out. And take note that you're usually gonna sand this before you put color on. And when you put your first coat on, you want a, you want a wet coat. You don't wanna do this in the typical mist coat, letting it get dry and stuff, because if you remember back, like I talked about putting the glue on the fabric, you're wanting something to go in the fabric. You don't want it to sit on top of the fabric that could peel off later. So you want it wet enough that your first pass, go ahead and make it a wet coat. And when we say cross coats, that means this way and this way, that's one cross coat. So if I was to say three cross coats, that's six passes that you're making across the product. Sometimes you can go in here and put three or four cross coats, pile it all on, and then turn right around and, and sand it all the next day or two and put your color on, it's fine. I found that it works really good if you put about two cross coats or maybe a little more and then do all of your fine sand into the fabric, let it cure, and then put one more slick coat of fabric primer on and then you can go right on that with, with color. Uh, as long as you don't wait you know, over three or four days, then you're going to need to do a mechanical sanding or scuffing it up. So, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, stop the film here and put my gun. I don't want to really mess my camera up. I'll just show a few shots of just me laying it on. There's no way I can show you about how to paint. I've been doing it for 25, 30 years and I still don't know how to paint. So everybody has their own techniques. Uh, I always like to do my ends a lot of times first and everything. And, and if I've got a good paint booth that I can paint like my color on flat, I'll do that for you know flowing out purposes. So we'll go ahead and stop and I'll go ahead and load my gun up and then we'll do just a few shots. So just make sure you want to put it in with a wet coat to make it soak into the fabric. And then when you're waiting between coats, we're actually using a little bit of accelerator in this that makes it where it'll sand in a couple days pretty easy. Uh, you want to go ahead, like I said, and get your, your wet coat and between shots, what we call finger slick, not just tacky, but you want it to where if you did that to it, it would pull up paint, but if you kind of could run across it lightly and it's not pulling up paint, you know, then you've got enough of the solvents kind of out to go with the next coat. Because if you go too soon, the solvents are trying to evaporate out, your, your thinner is trying to evaporate out that you've put your paint down with. And if you slick over another coat, not just our product, but some of the other, you know, companies' products, it's just the nature of paint. It, this single stage urethane will want to close the top and then that it's going to come out. And when it does, it creates a little bubble or something, you know, when it, it does come out. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the film and get the gun loaded up. And the next shot will be just putting on the, the primer. And after that, we'll, we'll go into sanding.
okay welcome back today and this is the next day after I primed the wing uh, we used a cap full of accelerator per gun full of mixed mixed primer that just ensures things to go ahead and move along pretty quickly it doesn't speed up the tacking time and the sling finger slick time during the painting but it makes the curing process move on ahead uh, the book does mention on an enclosed surface where there's no outlets that the fumes on the inside of the wing needs to be cleared out just like the top in the past i've not never i have never really worried about that part of it you usually have drain grommet holes and stuff i've heard guys talk about putting a little air hose in one end and kind of evacuating that air it does make sense that you've got the heavy fumes locked on the inside that could hinder your curing time i've never really seen that bother me as far as thinking that I had a problem or something because of that but it's mentioned in the book and that was that was thought about you know early on when Kenny and and uh, Mac come up with the process and and apparently there is something to that because it is in the book uh, being this is the next day you can see it's already you know ready to smooth out and sand out any imperfections what I like to do, and I can't really explain the process, uh, I normally like to take uh, just some scotch pad. Uh, the red ones usually work pretty well because anytime you have a hard surface, if you take sandpaper and go over it, I mean, one pass, you will cut a ridge all the way to the, to the uh, fabric. Uh, but you want to knock that glaze off. But I found before you go with like 320, sandpaper or whatever you're going to use to either wet sand or dry sand there's something about taking this scotch pad and knocking that shine and you can go with scotch pad you can go right over the ribs and right over the stitches if you don't just get really aggressive and there's something about breaking that little bit of a shiny gelled surface off of that urethane primer and i've heard the old timers call it plowing the field to let it air out or whatever, but there's something about breaking that and it lets the the rest of the air or solvents just finish on out. You don't even have to wait an hour after that. You can take sandpaper and start right on the primer. And unless you're water sanding, your, your sandpaper is gonna constantly be what I call stopping up or getting uh, stuff on your sandpaper, you know, real grippy spots and stuff. And it's something about when you knock over it with this and just break that surface, it goes right to sanding, you know, to a dust, you know, similar to the, the polyfibers, you know, silvers and everything. But, you know, ours is a filling primer, which means we don't paint, go through the process of painting on a brush coat of the pink or the brush coat of gray during, on a uh, star gloss system. The actual primer is going into the fabric and holding, and it's a good filler. Uh, one of the things, if you want the aircraft to look like a fabric plane and you don't want the tapes to completely hide, I usually like use 102 and use what we call the heavy tape, which is 102 fabric. A lot of people will use the light tape, which is the lightweight fabric. And if you're not careful putting very many coats, you will start to hide that paint line. And, and that's not really a problem, but you don't want to look like, make it look like you tried to hide them and some of them are showing and some are not. But you know, when you go with the, <coughs> excuse me, if you go to the heavier tape, the lines will pretty well always be there. You can cover them up if you put a lot of coats. Another thing I like to tell people before you start sanding or anything, take your hand and mash down. It may be something under there that wasn't at the surface that needed a piece of tape on it, but you know, you may rub across it and see, I can feel that rear spar right there. Well, if I get to sanding or I get the DA and I get out of hand, all it takes is me passing across that one time. And I mean, with a DA, if you hit that one time, you will actually cut completely through the fabric. I like to just mark that with something, little pieces of tape, a little spot right here, had a little diagonal brace for the trailing of this, and it's kind of within about a quarter inch. Just kind of mark that stuff out to give you a reminder when you start doing your sanding and then take these off one at a time and hand sand the sections of that out. So at this point, you can sand it all down really smooth. You can go back to the paint booth and thin you down one more coat of, of our 1030 primer 
and then go right to paint that really fills the weave well or you can go right to paint and it's going to be ultra shiny everything's going to look fine with it it's just you're not really going to see the weave but there's something about letting this cure and sand and then one more coat of primer stands on top of it and it completely fills all the weave uh, i could have put one more coat yesterday and it'd been just like it is today but by letting it cure one day then the primer goes on top of it. And remember, if you wait over two or three days, you'll want to at least scuff it before you put the paint because it will cure out to a point that there's not a chemical bond of the paint and you're gonna to have to have a mechanical bond to put your paint on. So at this point, this one's ready to sand out and uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna go directly to paint with this one. This is just a sample, sample piece that I'm doing some display stuff with.